I'm very excited to introduce our first speaker of the day. Somebody who is now the very first Spanish-speaking author on the Mind Valley platform, which I think that's huge, first of all. And Florencia Andres is an expert in coaching and in motivation. She's written four best-selling books that have sold over a half a million copies, which tells you something pretty big. She speaks to organizations all over the world. She coaches high-performance athletes all over the world. And I am so, so excited for her talk, not least of which because she also wins Best Dressed for the Day, hands down. So please welcome to the stage, Florencia Andres. That was such a great intro. Thank you. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Good morning, AFEST. How are you today? You're good. Okay, so I need my clicker. And um, my name is Florencia Andres, but you can call me Flo. Makes it easier, right? You can call me Flo. Uh, I was born and raised in Argentina, South America, and two years ago I moved to Europe with my family. And I'm delighted to be here with you today. And before we start, I want to ask you guys three questions. And this will be easy, because you will see the answers on screen, okay? So first question for you is, where are you? Here. Okay, um, I'm used to Latin audiences. So Latins are loud. Can we pretend we're Latin for a little bit? Where are you? Here. Oh, that was much more Latin, I like it. What time is it? Now. Last question for you is, who are you? This moment, this moment that never existed before and will never exist again. Oftentimes we're stuck in the past and we're thinking, um, did I forget to call somebody? Did I forget to pack my crown for AFEST? Or we're in the future thinking, I wonder what we're going to have for lunch today. And in that way, we miss the only thing we truly have, which is this moment that we will create together. So there's one thing we all here have in common. We love Mind Valley. There's one more thing we have in common. Uh, it's something we were all born with. It is a superpower, and it starts with the letter C. Do you know what it is? Curiosity, it could be. Courage, it could be. <laughs> all of those, all of the above, and confidence. Confidence is the driving force behind every dream. Confidence is the most important link between human beings. Confidence is the thing we have or we do not have when things go wrong, when the plan fails, when the pandemic hits. Confidence is the conviction that we will be able to face all the challenges that life presents us with. The ones we like and the ones we do not like. And the greatest thing about confidence is that we were all born with it. And I'm going to prove it to you. Who here has babies? Raise your hand, please. Or you have children and you remember when they were babies. Okay, lots of you. <laughs> if you look at babies and small kids, you can see that we're all born confident. They want to learn everything, they want to discover everything, they want to touch everything. And in the first two years of our lives, and we have music here, in the first two years of our lives, we make the most amazing progress we will do in our entire lifetime. We can learn how to walk, we can learn how to talk, we can learn how to ask for things. We can learn up to five languages without being taught. Why does that happen? Because we are often surrounded by an encouraging environment that wants us to grow and evolve. So just picture, right now we have a baby and he is crawling, right? He's crawling on stage and today is the day he decides he's going to give his first step. So he goes from crawling, slowly stands up, starts to wobble a little and goes like, there I go, and he falls. Would any of us here look at the baby and go, hey, what's wrong with you? Are you planning on crawling for the rest of your life? No, no, what do we do? We say, come on, come on, come, 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 yes, yes, well done, well done. And if he falls, Get up, get up, get up, get up, try again. And in that encouraging environment, we human beings flourish. And then what happens? And then we enter the educational system. <laughs> 
and we start receiving a very different message. And the message is, you are really bad for maths. You cannot sing. You suck at sports. Um, and we start writing our first words, and we hand them in, and we're super proud of what we're handing in, and then they give us back our paper, and our paper is all corrected. In what color? Red. Red. Universal color, of course. So that we don't miss out any single thing we did wrong, right? And slowly, but firmly, that total confidence we were all born with, that inner flame that burns when we are born, starts to fade. And maybe you survived the educational system. Maybe you were one of the lucky ones. You went to a great school or had great teachers, but life kept throwing you <coughs> curveballs. And maybe through a dysfunctional family, and maybe through a tough divorce, or your business failed, or you went through stress, anxiety. And at one point you said, where is that inner spark? Is it even there anymore? Yes. It's there. And because we were born with it, we can reignite it at any time we decide to do so. And change can happen super fast. Let me tell you a story. A while ago, I was coaching one of the best athletes in the world. And we do this together with my mother. And the greatest thing about coaching elite athletes is that you get to witness that even the most talented people on earth go through moments of profound self-doubt. So here I have this guy who's a star in his sport, absolute star, telling me, I don't know what's wrong with me, but it's been weeks that I've been playing awful, and um, I think my talent is gone, I think my magic has disappeared, and you know what? Within three days, I have the most important game of the season. It's the final game of the Queen's Cup. The Queen's Cup is called like that because the Queen of England hands the trophy to the winner. And so I say, okay, um, three days, we're going to focus on just one thing. The one thing that can turn this whole situation around. And so I told him, all those things you're telling yourself about yourself, that your magic is gone, that your talent has disappeared, A, they're probably not true. B, they are robbing you of the one thing you need the most to perform at your best, which is your self-confidence. And he says, yeah, yeah, I get it. But you know what the problem is? I feel like I have a broken record in my head. And the broken record is going, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Why can't you perform? What's wrong with you? Why are you playing so badly? Have you ever had that experience of having the broken record, the, the, the nagging thought that will not leave you alone? And so I told him, OK, if you have a broken record, it's time to put a new record on. And this is how we're going to do it. I want you to pick a phrase that is short empowering, that by only thinking about it, you feel more confident. And he said, OK, my phrase will be, I believe in me. And so I said, fine, tomorrow morning, I want you to wake up. And as soon as you wake up, what do you do? You put your record on. And what does that look like? You start repeating, I believe in me. And you're brushing your teeth, and you go, I believe in me. And you're washing your hair, and you go, I believe in me all day long. And he did it for three days. So three days later, game day is here. And the stadium was packed, packed with people. TV cameras are everywhere. This guy is on the spotlight, absolute spotlight. And the game begins, and he starts playing really well. But the opponent is also playing really well. And so when there was one minute left, one minute left, for this game to come to a close. This guy grabs the ball at the far end of the field and he starts dribbling through his opponents one by one, one after the other. And within 10 seconds of this game coming to a close, he shoots the ball and he scores. And they win the championship. And here comes the best part of this story. As he went to receive the cup from the queen, he says, hey Flo, do you want to know how I scored that goal? I said, yes, tell me. And so he says, the minute I grabbed the ball at the far end of the field, I was not thinking about scoring. I was not thinking about my opponent. I grabbed the ball and I put my record on. And I started taking the ball and thinking, I believe in me, I believe in me, I believe in me. And then he said, check this out. And he shows me his hand. And that's a photo of his actual hand. And in his hand it says, creo en mí, 
which in Spanish means, of course, I believe in me. And then he said, it has almost been deleted from my hand, but this will never be deleted from my heart. So change can happen fast. And if you're sitting there and wondering, wasn't this talk about relationships? We're not really addressing the issue, are we? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Because the single most important relationship you will ever have, and the one that will determine the quality of the rest of your relationships in life, is the one you have with yourself. How can we show up for others if we don't show up for ourselves? How can we show up and be good parents if we're tired and depleted? How can we be great leaders if we're exhausted, we're frustrated and anxious? It starts with us. And of course, then you can move on. And when I saw the dynamics that were going on in this team, I thought, mm-hmm, something's got to change fast. Three days before the game, that team was one hot mess. The players were criticizing one another. They were blaming the coach. The coach was blaming the players. And I said, OK, we need to do something. So I got them all in one room, players, coach, uh, physical therapists, all, the, all the, cr the crew was there. And they were kind of like minding their own business. Nobody's really paying attention. They're on their phones. So I stand in the middle of the room and I say, guys, do you want to double your chances of winning this tournament? And now they were looking at me. And so I shared with them a study, which is a fascinating study, that was performed on NBA teams. I learned about it with Mel Robbins. And they wanted to know if there was any special trait in NBA champion teams that was not present in the teams that performed the worst. And so they traced these teams all the way from the preseason to the playoffs. And yes, indeed, they found the pattern. They found something, one thing, you can predict who is going to be in the NBA playoffs by looking at one simple pattern in the preseason. Want to know what that is? Yes. Want to know what that is? Yes. Okay. You can predict who is going to win by looking at something. The, the team that wins is the one that has the highest amount of high fives, fist bumps, pats in the back, and gestures of encouragement. And you may wonder, um, really? <laughs> Does it make such a difference? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because all those gestures transfer energy. They build partnership. They build confidence. And they convey the most important message of all, which is, I believe in you. So when a team goes from blaming and complaining and judging to holding the I believe in you energy, and you believe in me, and I believe in you, and you believe in me, that team becomes unstoppable. Will you quickly high five the two people sitting next to you, just so we anchor this high five culture? <laughs> Good job. Nice. And so, of course, this is not only valid for a sports team. Of course not. This is also valid for any team. This is valid for a family. This is, this is valid for a couple. So, for example, if your kid is struggling with maths and he comes home very frustrated from school, you can teach down and teach him math. That will help. But there's one thing that will help even more, a lot more. If you teach him how to believe in himself and how to not lose that sense of self-worth just because it's not as good in math as others. Because that sense of self-belief will open far more doors in life than any straight A's in math will ever do. And if your husband or your wife is struggling in his business and he comes home with an attitude the last thing he needs is for you to remind him he's having an attitude. <laughs> have you ever done that before? I might have done it. It doesn't go well. But if you stay there and you look at him and you say, hey, I know, 
things are not working out the way you wanted them to work, and this sucks. But you know what? I believe in you. I believe in your capacity to overcome the situation. Then the whole energy changes. I believe in you is, I, I think it's one of the most powerful things we can say to anybody we care about. And I'm pretty sure everyone here today can think of someone who believed in you in a moment of your life when maybe you did not even believe in yourself. And you're all nodding. And for a minute, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And I want you to think, who was that person that believed in you? Who was that person that could see your value? Maybe when you could not see it that clearly. Close your eyes and bring it to your memory. Was it your mother, your father, a sibling, a mentor, a boss, a friend, a teacher? Who is this person in your life? What did he or she do and say to make you feel that way? I want you to imagine that this person is sitting across from you right now, looking at you in the eyes and smiling and saying, I believe in you. And as you're holding this presence, this image, I want you to listen to the words of poet Apollinaire. And he said, come to the edge, he said. We can't, we're afraid, they answered. Come to the edge, he said. We can't, we're going to fail, they responded. Come to the edge, he said. And so they came and he pushed them and they flew. People who believe in us give us wings to fly. People who believe in us reignite that inner flame that we all have. And if emotion is coming up, we welcome the emotion. And we take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Ah. Oh. And holding this energy, I want you to turn around and find somebody to work with. It's going to be a very short, we're going to hold this energy, okay? And what I want you to do is to share who this person was and what they did for you. And this is how we're going to do it. Please get together with someone. If anybody's missing a partner, you need to raise your hand and look around and find somebody else whose hand is raised. And you don't, don't start yet. I'm going to tell you how we're going to do this. Don't start yet. You can choose whoever you want, just two of you. Can you, can you lower the music a little bit? So this is how we're going to do it. When you're with someone, please choose who will be A and who will be B. And now you go, you're A, you're A. And A, raise your hand. A, raise your hands. And this is how we're going to do this. It's only going to be a minute per person. When I say go, one person will start talking, the other listens. Does not complete the sentence, does not say, oh yes, the same happened to me. We just listen. And then we switch roles, okay? So please, A, raise your hand. And when I say go, B starts. Go. <laughs> yep. Life surprises you. Okay, I'm going to, listen, listen. I'm going to bring you all back down to planet Earth with a question. Listen to this question. Because some of you, some of you might be wondering, yeah, this is 
fabulous. I'm bringing the memory of this special person in my life. But what if the one person who is supposed to believe in me doesn't? What if my spouse is not being that supportive? What if the investors I'm pitching are not really believing in me or my dream? What if my editor is not believing in me or my book? This is exactly what happened to me. Um, for many years, me and my mother had a dream of writing a book that would inspire hundreds of thousands of people to go for their dreams. And we worked hard on it, and in the year 2010, we finally had the book ready. And for some very lucky turn of events, one of the largest Spanish-speaking publishers got interested in our book. And so I was beyond excited, beyond excited. And I remember the day I went to sign the contract, I was wearing my best outfit, and I was carrying my shiny pen, because I thought, this is the day that my dream becomes true. And I'm walking into my editor's office, and I'm feeling like a million bucks, and I casually look at him and say, so how many copies of the book are we going to release into the world? And he looks at me, rather confused, and he says, um, 5,000? And I go, what do you mean 5,000? No, no, um, we need a lot more than that. I want to inspire hundreds of thousands of readers. And he says, um, okay, young lady, let me break the news to you. You live in a third world country. The economy is small. The market is tiny. People are not buying books. You're a first time author. There's no money for budget, for publicity, for marketing, or for a launch. So you will have to go by word of mouth. And trust me, trust me. If you sell 5,000 books by word of mouth, consider yourself very lucky. <laughs> and I remember standing there, um, can I have like, a piece of paper? I'm, I'm gonna show you something, how I felt. Yeah. So have you ever had the experience of somebody holding your dream right in front of your face and going, You've had that? That's exactly how I felt. And this is how I left the meeting. I was like, no budget, no marketing, no launch. And the one person who is supposed to believe in me doesn't. What am I gonna do? And then I came to a profound self-realization, an idea that changed my life. And I realized it was not his job to believe in me. It was my job. It was not his job to validate me. It was my job. It was not his job to believe in my dream. It was my job. And when I understood that, I got busy with that job. And I did everything you can possibly imagine. Me and my mother, we started doing affirmations and visualizations and meditations and all the Asians you can think of. And we started doing feng shui and we feng shui our house and we feng shui our office and we feng shui our car and we feng shui our pets. And Marie Diamond, where are you? Thank you for all your ongoing support all these years. That woman is a wizard. Yeah. I did everything. You know what I even did? Like, um, kind of embarrassing. I would call every single bookstore in town and tell them, I am Florencia Andres, I'm coming to sign books. And they'd be like, who are you? I'm the author of Confianza Total. Um, we don't know your book. I'm coming anyway. And I would show up. And they'd be like, huh? We did everything. The book was finally published. And uh, two weeks after it was published, it hit number two on the national bestselling list. <laughs> Yeah. And guess who called? <laughs> and guess what he said? Congratulations, ladies. And I'm standing there feeling like, you know, ah, we're finally getting some acknowledgement here. This feels really good. And then he says, this is what I call beginner's luck. Well, Beginner's Luck had a long-lasting effect because the book went on to sell half a million copies in the first year, was translated into many languages. We were the first women in 40 years to receive a Golden Book Award. And Sony Music... <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. 
Sony Music got interested in us and signed us as their first ever non-musical artist to tour around Latin America giving motivational talks about the book. And this story is not to belittle my editor, not at all. In fact, you know what? I see him as a teacher. He truly came to teach me the one lesson I finally needed to learn. And the lesson was, stop looking for validation outside and look inside. And if anybody of you, anyone, is sitting here and thinking, I need somebody to help me, I need somebody to discover me, I need somebody to finally understand my project and my dream, stop, it's a trap. It's a trap. Because when you look inside, you find the magic. And you know, the great thing about life is that it will bring us teachers, and not all of the teachers will be in the form of somebody who will not believe in you. In fact, sometimes it will gift you with the presence of somebody who gives you exactly what you need without you even asking for it. And I'm going to end our time together today sharing one of the most powerful experiences I recently had. And it involves someone we know very well. Vision, are you here? You're not here. Okay, you will have to watch the recording. Uh, but this is such a great story I want to share with you. So, in the year 2019, Vision called me and my mother and he said, um, guys, I want you to make a quest for Mind Valley. It's going to be the first ever Spanish spoken quest by Spanish speaking authors. And we said, of course we want to do it, of course. We were very excited and we worked very hard on it and we created the scripts and we created the outline and we worked for many, many months doing everything and there was one thing left to do, which was to film the actual quest. So we set a date in our agendas to fly to Malaysia to film the quest. And the date we set to do this was April 2020. <laughs> do you remember what the world looked like in April 2020? Yeah. So airports are closed, businesses are closed, schools are closed, and we're all locked down in the worst pandemic we've ever seen. Um, so, and what we thought that would last maybe two weeks, three weeks, didn't we all have that feeling? It will, la it will be over. It seemed to never end. And we started feeling quite discouraged at one point. And then Vision called me, and he casually says, hey Flo, would you be willing to film this on your own from your home? And as I'm standing there holding the phone, I'm looking at my home, and I'm thinking, this guy has no idea what my home looks like right now. I just moved my family from South America to Europe. The moment we arrived, the pandemic hits, we're locked down in a house that is not even my own. I'm trying to run my business while I homeschool my kids, who by now think I'm the worst teacher they ever had. <laughs> uh, and my mother, who's my partner, is across the world in Argentina, locked down in her place. How on earth are we gonna pull this out? And so with a string of, I remember like, I was feeling like I was melting in a puddle of self-doubt and anxiety. And I'm holding the phone, and with a string of voice I say, Vision, do you really think this would work? And now he responds with a very different tone. It was not the casual, on your own, from your home. Now he responds with a very firm tone, and he says, I have absolutely no doubt it will work. <laughs> and it will be a success. And that's all I needed. That's all I needed to eliminate my fears, my anxieties. Because in those words, I understood he was saying, I believe in this project, go for it. And so we did, and we started buying equipment from Amazon. We bought cameras, we bought green screens, we bought lights. We had Zoom calls with Mindvalley's amazing film crew who were teaching us how to do things. And within two months, the first ever Spanish spoken Mindvalley Quest was up and running. Yeah. And it was a success. So we're all born with this inner flame this inner flame that I like to think of as total confidence. We're all born with it. It's that inner flame that enables us to go for our dreams, to shine our light to the world. But sometimes, sometimes life starts throwing things at us and it throws obstacles and failures and heartbreak 
loss, grief, lack of support, lack of love, life can get pretty hard at times. To the point where you might feel, hey, have I lost my spark? Is it gone forever? And then another human being comes along and says, hey, let me help you start that fire. Let me help you do that. And I truly believe our mission in life is to keep our flame shining bright, to know our talents, to know who we are, to love who we are. And then our mission gets fulfilled when we go out into the world and we help those who think that they have lost their fire to reignite it. And you know what? The best time to start doing this is, can we say it all together, Latin style? The best time to do this is here, now, and in this moment. Thank you very much.